on the rock area. And welcome to my sanctuary, which is my bedroom. And yeah, um, I basically live in this room pretty much. Um, anyways, um, it took years before I had an actual bedroom, and that's a long other story. Today, I am going to talk about my, I keep talking about with different videos, my um, technique for rock painting. Um, and yes, I only use craft rocks. I don't use anything that I would buy for a collection or something. I would want to do research or study. Um, I love research and I like to study rocks and minerals and gems and crystals and all that stuff. Uh, so I have some that I just kind of have and display and others that, um, you know, I like to examine and things like that. So, but I like to do my rock art. So what I am going to do is I have, um, I start out with uh, a bowl. Um, this is, I've been, it's an old Chinese takeout bowl. Um, I've actually, I saved them for this kind of stuff. So um, I mix paint in them, things like that. Um, I have two storage bags. And these are, you buy the ones that come with like the twisty ties, um, not the zippers because it's a lot easier to maneuver and they're actually thinner and that's the way I like them to be. But I put one bag inside the other. The outside bag I will be using to cover this one so the rocks can dry. And then I will, um, the inside one, I double bag it just so if, it happens to break. I have, I don't get paint all over. It stays within the confines of this particular bag. Um, so my next thing I need to do is I um, put my bags and my rocks in a bag. Um, these are mainly white rocks, but I buy a variety of different colors and shapes and sizes. And I take a handful or two of these rocks and I put them in a bag. So it's pretty simple. Then I select paint colors. Sometimes I do I do a maximum of three. Um, sometimes I just do one and I add some glitter to it to get some texture. Um, I use acrylic paint. Um, and I'm always buying my acrylic paint online at Amazon. And um, any acrylic paint will actually work. Um, so I'm using this particular uh, bright magenta, um, and you can get sets of these for 12 or 16 different paints, um, and I'm using some blue. And I bought also these extra, um, like, squeeze bottles um, to put extra paint in, um, because I don't like to waste paint, so if there's anything left over when I'm doing painting, then um, instead of wasting it, I can put it in the container. So I have decided I'm going to put some magenta in here. So what I do is I just squeeze it in, just like that, a couple squirts, however you want, and then you see it's got paint on it. Um, then I take the other color, and this should have, yeah, it has a little bit of blue left in it. So then um, put that away. And then basically what I do is I put the other bag in here, get the air out of it, and then squeeze it down. And then it's basically I am just taking my hand and rolling, running it over the rocks. And as you see the colors, um, and look through, I like that it's clear because then I could see if there's a rock that doesn't have any paint on it. So after that, I take it out of, and this one didn't break, so that's really good. So then I take this plastic bag, the, the outside one, and I put it on here because I use these bowls for mixing paint and I don't want that color to come off. These, sometimes you could pop the paint right off of them. Uh, other times they're a little more difficult. So I have 
what I call my tools of the trade. Plastic bags and a skewer. Yes, the kind of skewer you skewer your meat or whatever. So after these are mixed, I put them in a plastic bag covered bowl. And then I get all the rocks. Sometimes they get stuck to get their stuff to the paint. You get whatever you can out into the bowl. So, and then I can just tie this up and discard it and very little paint, some, but little. Then what I have is this. I have a mix of, it's kind of like a pink and purple because obviously red and blue make purple. So this is a variety of that. It, it will be wet. So I try, I use the skewer to kind of flatten them all out. And then I set it aside to dry. And little by little as it dries, I use the skewer to separate them because sometimes once they're painted, they stick together. But if they're dry, eventually you can pull them apart. But sometimes that means that, that there's a little piece that the paint might come off. And if that happens, then that's usually the part that I glue to something so you don't see it. Um, if I needed to see the whole rock that way, then I would just touch it up with a paintbrush. And basically, this comes out different. Like, it's like uh, very, uh, like a marble effect because you're getting two tones. Um, a third one would be fine. I don't recommend much more than that. Um, I do recommend that if you're going to do black and white, that you um, paint the rocks black first, let them dry, and then add some white paint using the same technique, but because otherwise it'll come out gray. But if you want white and black um, to show, you know, black and then white um, in the marble effect, then you would want to um, do it that way, uh, white with any color, because otherwise it'll just lighten the color and then you get an effect that you might not want. It's kind of pretty whether you do it that way or not, but if you're looking for, say, something specific like black and white or blue and white or blue and red, you would wait till one dried because of the mix of the colors makes something else. You know, that's what primary colors do. They're main and then you mix them together and they create all these variety of colors depending on the shade. So, um, I mean, I did magenta and I did a, I think it was um, some kind of polar blue or, or whatever. Um, and that is basically how I create the, the painting techniques for my rocks. Hi, this is Amy Shannon, the Rock Nerd. And if you enjoyed the video that you just saw, you can leave a comment and also be sure to click subscribe on the YouTube channel. And if you click that little bell, it looks like a little bell, you can get notifications every time that uh, videos will drop. And also, if you go to my website, rocknerdamy.com, uh, you can subscribe there and you will get uh, some of my blog posts. And anytime there's an update, I'll be posting uh, my, my videos also on my website, also other information and images and more information about geology, rocks, minerals, ge gems, you name it, I'm going to talk about it or provide you with information about it. Now, I, I don't think I'm the only one in the world who likes rocks. So remember, geology rocks. <sighs> so terrible. Anyway, it does. Hashtag geology rocks. Hashtag rock nerd. See you next week. Thank you.